Hey everybody, it's Lynn Liaz, and I wasn't planning on recording today, so I'm gonna keep this message just to the point and gonna keep it as short as possible. But last night, and I will refrain from saying the names of the people who were in the video, but I was watching the video. They are very well-known people. One of them is a member of this NAR, New Apostolic Reformation Dominionist Movement. If you have questions about who or what those people are, they are the apostates. They are the false prophet, according to what the Lord has shown me. You can watch that video. It's titled False Prophet. It is a documentary. Back to the point. Yesterday morning, God spoke to me. And he said, watch, the snakes are getting ready to come out and give all the glory to Donald Trump. And he was referring to the fact that people were going to begin to say that the virus was all arranged by all these people to keep Trump from getting reelected. Now these riots and all of this stuff have been propagated by the elites and George Soros to keep Trump from getting reelected. Now, yes, we know that in the end times, things that happen come from sources that are evil, like the global elitist, who are the Luciferians, George Soros, and so forth. But that doesn't matter, not at all, to what God was telling me. So as I watched this video, and these two individuals were saying just that, they were saying, oh, this is all to keep Trump from getting reelected, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. The virus, these riots, the situation that happened with George Floyd and Derek Chauvin, it's all been propagated to affect Donald Trump and his election. So I sensed the anger of the Lord rising up in me very strong. And I asked him, why are you angry? I want you to tell me why you're angry so I understand. And he gave me a really strong warning and I'm going to prove it to you because when he gave it to me, he told me to write it down and then he moved me to research the things that he shared. So God told me the reasons he was angry is number one, because these things have happened because he has allowed it to happen for purposes of judgment. He has heard the pleadings of the people over the many generations. Remember, I did a video explaining that Psalms and Revelation were linked and that Revelation was the fulfillment of Psalms. Psalms being the plea of God's people for his justice. Revelation is the fulfillment of that justice. In fact, Every time that God pours out judgment on the earth or wrath, it shows all of those who are surrounding his throne, giving him praise and honor and glory. So these things that are happening are happening because number one, God is giving his people justice who have cried out for justice. You know, justice because of murdering of the innocent, abortion, justice because of all the homosexuality and the perversion and the sin and the corruption. Well, instead of giving God glory and giving God praise, we have been focusing on the entities behind it. 
Some of the people believe, of course, that this was Bill Gates. Now, by me saying that, that doesn't mean I don't believe that too. I've been reprimanded by the people. Why haven't you done videos on Bill Gates? Why haven't you done videos on this person or that person? Because I am not giving glory to those people for what God deserves the glory for. And stay with me and let me explain because this is definitely from God. So instead of looking to God, our creator, asking what is it, Lord, or seeking his face in this, we are trying to look to the wickedness behind what is happening. Secondly, the people are instead making it about Donald Trump. This is an attack on Donald Trump. This is an attack to keep him from getting reelected. Oh, poor Donald Trump. Okay, I do not uphold disgracing our leaders. I believe wholeheartedly we are to pray for our leaders. The Bible commands us to pray for our leaders, whether they are good leaders or evil. We are to pray for our leaders. So this isn't a bash our leader video whatsoever. God is clearly speaking that he wants to wake the sleeping church and he is sending a message to his people to give him glory and to repent and turn away from sin and turn to him. And he wants the glory for this because he has allowed these things to happen to wake up his people and to get us to repent. It is him who has allowed these things. It is not because of Donald Trump or whether Donald Trump did this or whether Donald Trump did that. It is ultimately not because of George Soros or Bill Gates or anything else. Because yes, the evil forces of this world are used in order to fulfill Bible prophecy that is evident throughout scripture. However, to God be the glory, to God be the glory and hallelujah to our God El Shaddai. Because he is the one who is waking up the sleeping church. It is his judgment on the house of God. Judgment begins in the house of God. It is his judgment. He is pouring out in order to bring justice to his people, in order that those who have walked away will wake up and repent while there is yet still time. So here is the word the Lord gave to me. Number one, you must understand this incident that happened with George Floyd and Derek Chauvin is a direct message to the apostate church and those who are listening and partaking in the apostate church, the false prophet, the new apostolic reformation movement, evangelical dominionist. This is a direct message to those of you who are involved in that. Those of you who are giving the wicked powers of hell on this earth the glory that god deserves those of you who are giving the leaders of this world the glory that god deserves you had best repent and you're gonna see why this is what god says and i'm gonna back this up i even asked god if okay he had already given me all this other stuff but i said one more thing Speak to me and wait till you see what I turned to. All right. The message from God is this, and then we're going to break it down and I'm going to prove it to you. Because, and he is speaking to the apostate church. He is speaking to those who are partaking in idolatry. Those who are partaking in giving these dark powers from hell to glory and those of you who are partaking and giving the president of the United States or any worldly leader the glory, here is what God says to you and you had best repent. Because you have crushed my heart and because you have refused to give God glory and honor and praises, the man you honor and give my glory, honor and praises to and look to for your salvation will turn against you and crush your necks. Now, this is spiritual. There's not going to be a foot that's going to be pressed against your neck. The significance of what happened with George Floyd and Derek Chauvin, with George getting his neck basically crushed by the knee of the police officer. A police officer represents authority 
and justice. And I'm not saying anything about George Floyd's true person or character. This is just symbolism in relation to the incident. George Floyd represents the apostate church and the sleeping church. Let me explain. The name George means of the earth. The beast of the earth is the false prophet. The apostate church, which I have proven to you, even though some of you still don't accept it, God revealed that to me in my video titled, The False Prophet. So George means of the earth, the beast of the earth who are the apostates and the false church. Floyd means gray haired, which means distress, age of maturity. It is the end, ripe, done, finished, plenty of opportunities to gain wisdom, plenty of opportunities to wise up and repent. Derek means people ruler or ruler of the people. Chauvin means, and this is what the enemy doesn't want you to know. We keep hearing about chauvinist in regards to prejudice. Well, that is one of the meanings too, but the main meaning, and I will show it on the screen, the devil does not want you to know, means excessive patriotism, aggressive or exaggerated patriotism. That is what Chauvin means. So you have George Floyd who represents the sleeping apostate church. He's on the ground. His neck is being crushed. He represents the sleeping apostate church, the false prophet and great distress, which is coming. It is the end. You've had plenty of time to repent. Derek Chauvin represents those who would seem to bring us justice, those whom we keep looking to and trusting for fairness and equality and justice, our legal system. Derek, ruler of the people, Chauvin, excessive patriotism, aggressive or exaggerated patriotism. Now let's reread what the Lord said. Because you have crushed my heart and because you refused to give God glory and honor and praises, the man whom you honor and give my glory, honor and praises to and look to for your salvation will turn against you and crush your necks. But what does crushing your neck mean now? Now that we've broken down the names of the people and the symbolism of that, what is the symbolism of the neck being crushed? It symbolizes pride and self-confidence. That's right. The neck being crushed symbolizes pride and self-confidence. God is going to remove your pride and your self-confidence. So what is coming? Many of you will reject this because of your beliefs and your stance on tribulation theories and raptures. But I say to you, as God has told me himself, the second and the third seal are going to open now. You will be totally reliant on God for everything. Your pride, your arrogance, and your self-confidence of which you have puffed yourself up will now be removed. You will have to depend on God, but let me give a word of peace to those of you out there watching who are of the true body of Christ and have not fallen victim to this apostate church. It says that the grain will be harmed, the wheat and the barley. Well, the wheat was for the wealthy and the barley was for the poor and barley was generally used as feed grain for the animals. So the poor people could only afford to purchase barley. So what that means is the rich and the poor alike are going to be affected. That's everyone. The oil and the wine represents God's anointed. Those who are truly redeemed and saved and bought with the blood of Jesus. I know you've all heard a different teaching on this, but I'm going to teach it to you the way God has taught it to me. And this is what he showed me. The wheat and the barley represents everyone except for the oil and the wine. And that is God's true body of Christ. Those who are truly repentant. 
those of us who are truly repentant and of the true body of Christ, we will still have to depend on God, but he will provide. He will provide for his true bride. Everyone else is going to be going through utter and outright hell because they have refused to repent. They have sought a man and a system to save them instead of seeking the things above, which is God. They have given their praises and their glory to man instead of seeking the face of God and giving him praise and honor and glory. They have given away the glory and the praise and the honor which belongs to God, our Heavenly Father. And they have given it away to the system, to the beast system and to the man. Therefore, you will reap the benefits of the man. And that man and that system is going to crush your neck. And therefore, your pride and your arrogance and your self-confidence will be removed. That is what the Lord God says to you. Captivity and famine and inner conflict is coming. Inner turmoil, which is the fruit of worshiping a man, the fruit of idolatry. The fruit of looking to man and a system to save you instead of looking to God, your creator. His name, by the way, is El Shaddai. El Shaddai, his name is written on your heart. El Shaddai, his name is written over Jerusalem. El Shaddai, he is the one who deserves all the glory. To God be the praises and the glory. To El Shaddai be praise and glory and honor and power and dominion forever. He is the one in control. He is the one who deserves the glory. Nothing happens in this world without El Shaddai allowing it to happen first. And he wants the recognition. He wants to be seen. He wants to be honored. He wants to be loved. He's tired of what belongs to him being cast to the idols of this world. This is a strong message he gave to me. He is going to crush the neck of those who in their pride and arrogance and own self-confidence have chosen to give glory and honor to the beast system and to a worldly leader. So therefore I say to you, what is coming next is inner conflict, inner war, as you are now seeing already. And it's going to get worse. And famine and captivity is coming because you have refused to repent. And you have made your God a different God than El Shaddai. Now I'm going to share with you the scripture that God gave to me. It's rather lengthy. But this is what's coming next. Originally, this passage I'm about to share was given to a different people historically. However, because God's word lives and God's word breathes and God's word is alive and God's word never, ever dies or ceases or comes to an end. This word is for us today. Those of you who refuse to renounce your idolatry, those of you who refuse to give God the glory, those of you who choose to remain asleep and in a stupor and in a slumber, those of you who refuse to turn your heart to God and turn your face to God and give God the glory and see him and look to higher things instead of looking at the earth, instead of keeping your focus on the earth and on the things of Satan, here is what will happen next. And it is found in Lamentations chapter 1. How lonely sits the city that was full of people. She has become like a widow who was once great among the nations. She who was a princess among the provinces has become a forced laborer. She weeps bitterly in the night. Please note that in the book of Revelation where Babylon is being destroyed and burns, she says, I am not a widow. Well, according to God, she is. She weeps bitterly in the night. 
and her tears are on her cheeks. She has none to comfort her among all her lovers. All her friends have dealt treacherously with her. They have become her enemies. Judah has gone into exile under affliction and under harsh servitude. She dwells among the nations, but she has found no rest. All of her pursuers have overtaken her. In the midst of distress, the roads of Zion are in mourning. Because no one comes to the anointed feast, all her gates are desolate. Her priests are groaning, her virgins are afflicted, and she herself is bitter. Her adversaries have become her masters. Her enemies prosper, for the Lord has caused her grief because of the multitude of her transgressions. Her little ones have gone away as captives before the adversary, and all her majesty has departed from the daughter of Zion. Her princes have become like bucks. They have found no pasture, and they have fled without strength before the pursuer. In the days of her affliction and her homelessness, Jerusalem remembers all her precious things that were from the days of old, when her people fell into the hand of the adversary, and no one helped her. The adversary saw her. They mocked at her ruin. Jerusalem sinned greatly. Therefore, she has become an unclean thing. All who honored her despise her because they have seen her nakedness. Even she herself groans and turns away. Her uncleanness was in her skirts. She did not consider her future. Therefore, she has fallen astonishingly. She has no comforter. See, O Lord, my affliction, for the enemy has magnified himself. The adversary has stretched out his hand over all of her precious things. For she has seen the nations enter her sanctuary, the ones whom thou didst command, that they should not enter into thy congregation. All her people groan, seeking bread. They have given their precious things for food to restore their lives themselves. See, O Lord, and look, for I am despised. Is it nothing to all you who pass this way? Look and see if there is any pain like my pain, which was severely dealt out to me, which the Lord inflicted on the day of his fierce anger. From on high, he sent fire into my bones and it prevailed over them. He has spread a net for my feet. He has turned me back. He has made me desolate, faint all day long. The yoke of my transgressions is bound. By his hand, they are knit together. They have come upon my neck. Check that out. They have come upon my neck. Folks, I randomly turned to this when I asked the Lord to confirm what he had shown me. The yoke of my transgressions is bound. By his hand, they are knit together. They have come upon my neck. He has made my strength fail. The Lord has given me into the hands of those against whom I am not able to stand. The Lord has rejected all of my strong men. In my midst, he has called an appointed time against me to crush my young men. The Lord has trodden as in a winepress. The virgin daughter of Judah, for these things I weep. My eyes run down with water because far from me is a comforter. One who restores my soul. My children are desolate because the enemy has prevailed. Zion stretches out her hands. There is no one to comfort her. The Lord has commanded concerning Jacob that the ones round about him should be his adversaries. Jerusalem has become an unclean thing among them. The Lord is righteous, for I have rebelled against his command. Hear now, all peoples, and behold my pain. My virgins and my young men have gone into captivity. I called to my lovers, but they deceived me. My priest and my elders perished in the city while they sought food to restore their strength themselves. See, O Lord, for I am in distress. My spirit is greatly troubled. My heart is overturned within me. 
for I have been very rebellious. In the street the sword slays, in the house it is like death. They have heard that I groan, there is no one to comfort me. All my enemies have heard of my calamity. They are glad that thou hast done it. Oh, that thou wouldest bring the day which thou hast proclaimed, that they may become like me. Let all their wickedness come before thee and deal with them as thou hast dealt with me. For all my transgressions, for my groans are many and my heart is faint. That is what El Shaddai, the Lord my God, gave to me. Concerning the days ahead and concerning the lack of repentance and concerning the fact that his people are finally receiving justice and instead of giving praise to God be the glory, they complain. And instead of giving praise to God be the glory, they give the honor and the glory and the praise to the system and to the man who is the face of that system. Shame on you, says the Lord. Shame on you, says the Lord. Repent. Repent. Because the one whom you give glory to is about to crush your neck. In other words, he is about to take your pride and reduce you to ashes and take away your self-confidence. And in that day and in that hour, who will deliver you? Your God, the God that you serve in your idolatry? Watch and see, he will not deliver you. He will crush your neck. God is angry. God is angry. I encourage those of you watching this video to repent and begin to look to God and give him glory. If you do not believe me, look through the book of Revelation. Every time a judgment occurs, the scene in heaven is everyone gathered around the throne of God, giving him praise and glory. God is our righteous judge. God is the great I am. God is awesome. God is the one in charge. God is righteous and holy. He sits on heaven's mercy seat. Give him the glory and the praise. Stop looking to man. Stop looking at the system. It is not wrong to point out the system as it pertains to the unfolding of Bible prophecy. It is not wrong to show the lost and the unrepentant in the world what is taking place as it pertains to Bible prophecy. This is okay. But God does not want the glory that belongs to him being removed and being given to the system or given to the face of the system because God is going to send you your deliverance through that system and through that face. And that deliverance is going to be destruction. He is going to turn you over to it. This is a warning to you of what's coming. It is done. It is finished. Those of you who have been involved in this idolatry, get out now. Reject it. Repent for it so that you will not be included in the judgment which is coming forth very soon. It comes quickly. Quickly, I say to you, it is coming. To God be the glory. And don't forget what I said about what the wheat and the barley represent. They represent the rich and the poor. That's everyone. The oil and the wine represent God's true bride on this earth, not the apostates. That is why the oil and the wine will not be harmed. The oil and the wine will not be harmed. The oil represents the anointing, the Holy Spirit. The wine represents the blood of Jesus Christ, our salvation. So those who are truly saved and truly have the Holy Spirit, God will provide for you. You are to totally depend upon him. When this comes, he will provide for you. But those of you who refuse to repent, those of you who mock the word of God, those of you who do not believe the word of God that has been delivered to you, and you do not repent, you will face the consequences of God's judgment that is getting ready to unfold before your very eyes. Continue then to serve. 
your worldly master. Continue then to engage in idolatry and you will receive the blessings of your worldly master and you will receive the blessings of your idolatry. Let's say a prayer real quick. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we give glory and honor to you, El Shaddai. We recognize you, we see your face, and we worship you and you alone. We turn away from the wickedness of this world. We turn away from any idols we have puffed up before you, and we only see you. Yes, my Lord, we are awake. Yes, our eyes are opened. Yes, we recognize you and that you are bringing justice for us. You are bringing us justice for the unjust things the devil has done all throughout history. You are finally bringing redemption and justice to your people. And we give you praise and honor and glory, no matter how bad it looks. We trust you, El Shaddai, in the name of Jesus. We trust you and we lean on you and we honor you and we magnify your name. For we recognize that you are awaking the sleeping church. You are awaking the sleepers. You are sending a strong message that time is up to repent for those whom you have trusted, those you have looked to for authority and trust and confidence. They have their knee pressed against the neck of those who refuse to recognize and refuse to repent and their pride and their self-confidence and arrogance will be removed. And we just thank you and we praise you and we lift up your name on high and we will serve none other than you. In the mighty name of Jesus, El Shaddai, we will not be deceived. We will continue giving you honor and glory and thanks. We will give you the sacrifice of praise and we praise you and lift your name on high. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. And amen to God be the glory. This was a strong word. I have prayed over it. I asked God for all sorts of confirmations and he gave it to me. I'll just tell you one last time. This whole incident that happened was a message from God between George Floyd and Derek Chauvin. No matter how it happened, whether they were real or actors or whatever, because I know there's a lot of garbage on the internet right now, none of that matters. This is a message from God to his people, clearly, and this is not an attack on these actual people or who they really were. This is purely symbolic that the name George is of the earth, which is the beast of the earth, the apostates, the false prophet, those who serve the apostate leaders, Floyd, gray-haired, great distress, age of maturity, it is the end, ripe, done, plenty of opportunities to gain wisdom, plenty of opportunities to repent, but you have refused, you apostate church, you have refused. Derek, ruler of the people, or people ruler, Chauvin, excessive patriotism, aggressive or exaggerated patriotism and prejudice. So all of you who refuse to repent, all of you who keep giving glory and honor to the system and to the face of the system, that very system and face is going to turn against you and crush your neck. It is going to crush your pride and your arrogance and your self-confidence. And everything shall be stripped from you, naked. Will you then give glory to God? Will you then wake up? Will you repent? And will you give your glory to God when this comes upon you? Thank you everyone for listening. Remember, I am viewer supported. If God moves you, you can sow a gift into this ministry. The information is on the screen and below the video. Thanks to all of you who have been giving. I appreciate your support of this ministry because I am mostly a 100% viewer supported. God bless all of you. Share 
this message. Like this video to help us circulate and share it everywhere that you can. Facebook is doing something to a lot of videos that get posted on Facebook. A message comes up saying something about your settings or something that is a Facebook thing. There's nothing wrong with my videos. This is happening to a lot of people. All you have to do is there's three dots going down and three dots going across at the top right hand corner of the screen. All you have to do is click on the three dots at the very top going across and select Safari or YouTube, and then you can view it. But I'll probably upload this video to Facebook as well in case that happens. So that's all you have to do if you get that message. It's a black screen and it says something about your settings. I can't remember what it is. You don't need to change anything. It's something Facebook is doing. This is a Facebook thing strictly. It's not a problem with YouTube. God bless all of you. Get close to God. Get close to El Shaddai. Spend time in his word. Draw near to him. Repent. Open your heart and repent. Let that hunger that you have in your spirit, let it come forth. Feed it with God's word and with prayer and with praises. God bless all of you.